Welcome to the Eczema Podcast. Today, I have an exciting guest here because we are going to dive into the healing story of this baby. And I have her mom here with me as well. Her name is Eling, and I am just excited. They are based in Australia. And welcome, Eling, to the show. Thank you, Abby. It's such an honor to have you both here and to see your daughter, Olivia, here as well. You guys have had such a long journey. And for those who are watching on YouTube, I'm just going to quickly share a before photo of what your daughter's skin looked like. But basically, just to describe, it was very red all over, dry skin, peeling. But Eling, I'll let you share what was the journey like um, before you found healing? And yeah, what was it like with your daughter? It started off, you know, she was born like a normal baby and a month into her, you know, yeah, a month into her birth, after she was born, she had a small red patch and that started to grow more and more until it was completely covering her whole body. And as you can see in the picture, it was extremely flaky and she was an extremely fussy baby. She would, you know, if I ate something that was adverse to her, she would scream the whole day and I used to hold her upright and she would just rub her little head on my chest from all the itch. It was extremely difficult. I remember one day I went out to eat with my mom-in-law. I'm like, this is the last time I'm eating out. And then after we ate out that the next day, the whole day, she was just screaming and I could not put her down the whole day. Her, she had, you know, something, her digestion was not good after that. And that's when I decided no more. And you, I just, you know, day and night did a lot of research Every night I would read medical journals until I would just be too exhausted and go to sleep. Just especially when they said there's no cure, that was really frightening for me. Yeah, I, I'm like, how am I going to deal with this for the rest of my life? Yeah, it, it was extremely difficult. Every day was really difficult. You know, some days no, no household chores would get done because I'd be just holding her the whole day. I would try all these remedies because when you do research at the top, they'll be like, use rosemary oil, use tea tree oil, use, and I'll try that one thing every day. I'll try that one thing and nothing ever worked. And I, I yeah, I just, yeah, don't feel like it was a one, it's a one thing thing. It's more complex than that one thing. Otherwise everybody will get, get it resolved. Yeah, it was very emotional as well because when you're going through a physical, you know, ailment, you mentally, you're, you're in a lot of pain because you, you worry much. You don't know what's gonna, what the future is gonna look like. And yeah, it was very, very difficult. And I, I prayed to God, begged God, I was sobbing at night begging, oh, please, you know, help me find a cure. Like, I'm sure it's a small thing. It's like a tweak, but we just don't know. And I, I did a YouTube search and came across, you know, this, none of this stuff is ever at the top of search results. It's always buried at the bottom because I think the algorithms don't like anything that's not mainstream so you know i i just searched read everything and you know on on that i could you know search for and there was nothing there was a bit more on platforms like instagram and then i had to type in the keyword eczema functional medicine to find you know something else and that's when i i found a video on root cause dermatology and I went through her video dr julie greenberg and I thought, oh, this makes a lot of sense. And then I saw that she had pointed to the Eczema podcast. And I thought, wow, there's actually a podcast on this. I never thought to look at podcasts because podcasts are always quite, quite well researched. That's how I came, came across that. And at the same time, we still wanted to see a dermatologist just to make sure that it is, you know, correctly diagnosed. But unfortunately, when we went, my husband said, oh, why? this is the easy solution, why are you doing this? Difficult. Why are you do going through this? Because when I stopped using any sort of, you know, active creams, she started burning. And that was hell on earth, having a burning baby. And he was like, oh, just take the easy route. Why are you, you know, doing, going through all this crazy stuff? No one goes through this stuff. And just for some background, this is when Olivia was two or three months old, right? I, yes, I'm guessing. Was- Three, three months old. We got our first protocol from the eczema, from you guys, eczema conquerors. And yeah, that it was to stop the active creams, which I agreed with. 
and when we first stopped she that one day luckily we didn't use active creeds very long but that one day she burned and it wasn't actually prescribed it was actually a sort of an, an under the table cream where the pharmacist person told us that he just used antifungals we thought hey there's no steroids in this it, it won't do anything but as soon as we stopped that cream her face burned up there must have been some steroids in there and that was very very difficult night i mean i've seen the videos on the topical withdrawal that's crazy hard but yeah i think it's maybe like a fraction of what that was there yeah. And it's hard knowing that your your little one is young and you, you're not sure what you just put in them and all of a sudden you're getting these different symptoms and it's scary to go through that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we were desperate. <laughs> we tried. And what, what other symptoms did she have when she was going through her worst flares at three months old? Was she already, was she able to sleep through the night or was she crying a lot? Was she really fussy or moody? Oh yeah, she was very moody. You know, I, I would break down in tears because she was so difficult. Um, and she hurt because I had a bad pregnancy. She didn't cry like a normal baby. When she cried, it was like screaming cry. It was extremely stressful. And that day that she, it only lasted about a day or two. Um, and she just looked like she had a helmet on, like of red and the only white part was here around her mouth and yeah she i think she didn't sleep from like 4 a.m and i had to like just hold her until the morning came yeah very fussy very irritated yeah and, and when do you feel like her symptoms first started was it right when after birth or was it shortly after shortly after one month which i heard is quite soon but yeah, I guess I had a bad pregnancy. It just, everything just piled on top of each other. And so, yeah. But, and but, yeah. do you want to share a little bit about what your pregnancy was like too? Because I know we've chatted before where you feel like it may have contributed to some of the symptoms as well. There was, a, because I had another toddler and he was going to a daycare where he wasn't happy and I was in the middle of changing a career and studying. And then my mom-in-law had to get a minor surgery and I was helping her you know deliver food just too many things on top of each other and then on top of that we got food poisoning eating out just that one week I just completely had a breakdown and then it led to a lot of resentment for you know I think a lot of moms go through a thing where they feel like a lot of resentment that you know there's no village for them they don't have a village of anyone helping them and that unforgiveness and that resentment caused a lot of previous traumas to resurface because you know this time around I knew how I was having a girl and I felt like you know my upbringing because I was a girl I went through a lot of unfair treatment <laughs> and, you know at, from an Asian culture um, there's a lot of favoritism and so I felt like wow I cannot believe I went through that as a girl and now I'm having a daughter I don't want you know I would never let anything like that happen to her so yeah it was just a lot of you know a lot of resentment a lot of unforgiveness and I think that led to a bit of depression when I was pregnant and it was, it was very stressful on my body holding on to all this emotional stuff and I think that led to my immune system being very unhealthy and passing all that to the baby and they always say you know don't be unhappy or you're gonna get sick and I, I mean, I always knew that, but this, this was different. I, you know, when you walk through it, then you know, yeah, when you're, when you're unhappy, it can lead to illness. And I think that having much stress as well caused me to eat a lot of sugar and carbs. And I thought, oh, sugar is natural. Carbs is natural. Like I never, I would never touch seed oils or, you know, food, food dyes or anything like that. But I thought, oh, sugar is natural. Carbs is natural. And I just ate that, ate so much of that. And I gained a lot of weight when I was pregnant. And that also probably contributed to a very unhealthy gut in the baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the last, the final hit of the straw was the final hit was when I gave birth and my obstetrician went on a holiday and he wanted to induce me before he went on a holiday. And because I probably have an unhealthy gut microbiome and I got put on drip antibiotics quite early on because I had a fever. 
I think that just completely wiped out who it means. I, I know what you mean and thank you for sharing. I know that as moms, it's easy to feel that guilt and to wonder if we did things right or the best that we could during our pregnancy. And just know that nothing is your fault, Eileen. And you did such a great job during pregnancy and you're such a great mom. And we never know if anything that we ate or did really contribute to it but it's always hard to say. Sometimes people do do the same things as you and their kids don't have any eczema at all. And then sometimes it's the complete opposite. We do the best we can and then our, our kid has it as well. It's always hard to say what could have caused it, but I appreciate you for sharing some background for our audience and just know that you're such a wonderful mom and the fact that you went to the ends of the earth to help her find something to help her skin get better really says a lot about you. Looks like my my little one just joined too. Join the podcast on if you're watching the video version. But Eling, thank you for sharing. I know that you went through so much with her and just so much that uh, you haven't even shared yet but I know that even as a mom there was much stress to go through that go through everything that you went through tell me what happened afterwards after you mentioned you were trying the creams and then yeah what happened after you know we, we I did my research about the different programs that were that were available and I actually looked at Maria Temple and I contacted Jason Lee as well and you know I was really considering the Maria Temple but my husband was like no it's so expensive what if it's a scam <laughs> and I thought okay you know what I'm already you know on your ma mailing list I'm gonna try you guys as well and I joined the call with Stephanie and she did you know she didn't really push me to buy the product but she you know gave me some pointers and I thought you know you know these guys experts they've interviewed many people they should, I think they know, they will know, you know, a cure for her. So when I, after I joined the program, I had her onboarding with Stephanie and I burst into tears from the stress. And she said, you look, put, put you guys with a call with earlier. I'm grateful for that. And when, when we got the protocol, um, went shopping that day straight away to, you know, change up everything. And we, we just saw a difference straight away. Like, she she wasn't you know getting worse she we, when we stopped the cream she went all red but after that burnt out she didn't flare up anymore and she started to have white patches like we never saw any white patches except for the creams and so we knew that we were on the tra right track really quickly and within a month um she was like almost like almost looking like this like today it, she was very fast um but you know we we also supplemented with you know a lot of healthy juices at home and yeah try try and have a healthy lifestyle to complement that she can heal faster thanks for sharing Yiling, and you've been on such a wonderful journey and done so much for her and what was it that you felt helped the most that helped her skin clear it was the protocol because i don't have time to research you know everything and most importantly try everything you know there, there are some things that you can look up online but are you gonna have the time because you're against i feel like you're you know against the clock because the longer you drag this on the more likelihood of asthma or the atopic marsh as they say so i want her to have a good skin barrier as soon as possible and just having someone else like who's an expert tell me do this and then we just follow with that to a T. And then it's just, you know, yeah, it's just a lot better. I don't have that mental burden. I can just do do what I'm told and she gets she gets better. And from experts, I don't have to try. You know, before I was cooking rosemary water and I would have this heavy jug and pour it in her bath every night. And then it, it was just a lot of routine, like putting different things on her skin every night. It took much time, um, and it was it just it was just too much. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I know that you you all went through so much, and, and thankfully the 
diet change was very temporary and she, it helped her get better. I remember that it was the suspected salicylates and histamine that was a potential trigger for the skin. Yes, exactly. I believe it's yeah, both. And as soon as we cut that out from the diet, she got better. And when, you know, sometimes I would still unknowingly eat a little bit and then the next day she would flare, flare up a bit and so I still follow the protocol diet but I eat a little bit of the, the, um, the, the high salicylates. And it looks like she's able to tolerate it more because just the way her skin looks now which is really amazing. I'll, I'll bring her full screen too so that people can see but yeah, even just like on the video right now, her skin looks amazing. No problem. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing how you're able to balance both as well. But one thing I did want to note is an important thing that we did work on for anyone listening. Um, one, one thing we always work on is the overgrowth of Staph aureus. And we did work on Staph for her. And one of the things that we helped to support was to help get the flares down by getting the staph aureus down and we also hydrated her skin from the inside out y you did such a great job of following the recommendations from your protocol and also adding in the vinegar oh. sprays as well that really helped and i know that when you had been working with ben from our team he actually customized a custom cream recipe for you and all the ingredients you know different things like the b12 b12 cream rose hip and rosemary and a few other things i remember he added in did you find that helped as well or were you able to do the creams yes that helped a lot because you know what i used to do is every night i would put different ingredients on her and he made, he gave me a recipe and I just made that cream once and I could put on it every night. It saved me so much time. And she used to have a weepy eye. I don't know if you have some pictures of her, but she would have this runny eye and I didn't know what that was until we went to the dermatologist and they did a swab and it was a staph infection. We didn't use any of the ointments, but just Ben's cream. And two months later, one day I just noticed that her eye wasn't weepy anymore. And that weepy eye smelled really bad. It had it had a it had a strange fishy kind of smell to it. And that was just all gone from, from the cream that he made. So yeah, it, it was really good that we were able to treat it externally and internally. That's great. Yeah. And the ingredients really helped to bring down the inflammation. There was also some anti antibacterial ingredients in the cream too. And the coconut oil also helped with that. But there was also some vitamin D to help with restoring the skin barrier and repairing the skin as well and this this cream recipe is customized for each person just want to let everyone know that if you did try something like that at home it might not work the same way for yourself that's just one thing to keep in mind but i'm glad that it worked for your daughter and it's just nice to see how she's improved yeah and we didn't you know every time you use something conventional there's always side effects i didn't want to put something on her that wasn't natural so yeah it was really good to see that you know something quite natural worked for her i'll share some photos of her on the screen too but she was only three months old at that time and the really wonderful thing is um it just goes to show at such a young age you can do much to help them without necessarily resorting to the steroid creams and different types of medication as well not not saying that anyone who's listening shouldn't use it but just saying that there are also other alternatives too because we do also have some clients we work with who do both at the same time conventional medication and natural methods and both can work together simultaneously yeah this is your this is olivia right after and it's amazing how much she's healed and gotten better and I'm just shocked and I remember looking at her photo and I was like, wow, I can't believe it's the same baby. Yeah, and not just the, you know, the, the skin, but also her temperament it is much better. I can actually go out with my toddler and get on with life and just be a normal human again, which I wasn't the first two months. Yeah, thank you guys so much for that because 
I was in such a dark place before. It was hard every day. I mean, I, I own, you know, I now I know what it's like to have, you know, a, a kid with special needs. You know, that that is just, it's just so hard. Um, yeah, just to be able to live a normal life and not have, you know, someone that's constantly crying and you know, constantly sick. It's just you can just have mental capacity to live. It's just much of a blessing I, I mean I don't take anything for granted now after after what what I've gone through then yeah. yeah and your chest really has become your testimony and your message a mess has become your message and now it's able to help many people and that's one thing I really appreciate as well is you went through much but now you're able to share it with others and help people who are on the same journey as well yeah and same with you abby i mean you know we only went through this for two months but you went through this for such a long period and you were able to heal and help many other people heal so you know we don't have to go through such a long period of pain so yeah thank you thank you for starting your program oh thank you that means a lot and yeah going through the eczema for over 20 years and just having some severe moments on and off it, it i definitely had times where i felt like giving up and you know just having those depression and suicidal moments but you're right it, it was one of my prayers that hopefully i can go through this so that other people don't have to go through it the same way or go through it as long and it's it's such a blessing as well that even though it was hard watching olivia go through it but it's also a blessing that at such a young age, she went through it where she won't really have to remember. And now her life has changed for the better, which is which is also a big blessing too. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're nipping it in the bud when she's young and then she can grow up and, you know, not have to go through steroid withdrawal like many other people. Mm -hmm. I think that, that is just much better. Yeah. Um, and I love this photo of you both. You, you both look happy and you can see that she's gotten much better. Um, even though there's a, there's a slight amount of redness on the cheeks, but it's nowhere near what it was before. And you can just see she's happy. Yeah, it's, it's just very localized now. So every time yeah. there is something, it's just this little part. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And I want to take some time to share with the audience about some other things that you did as well, um, especially when it came to your second protocol. And I know that you also wanted to share some things that you tried as well. Recently, we had a mom who was struggling with her baby going through a really hard time too. And she said, you know, can't I just give her, give my baby like a whole bottle of probiotics just to help them feel better and help them improve. And I want to hear about your experiences too, because I know you shared something similar before. Before you know, you know, I did all my research and I thought I'd take it into my own hands. Gave her some probiotics. I thought, oh, yeah, that's it's good. Give her a bigger, bigger cap full. And oh my gosh, that was a big mistake. She ended up being really constipated and having really sharp stomach pains that um, she would just scream. Yeah, because there was just so much gas in her. I don't know. You, yeah, what what that was about. Yeah, it you know it was a broad spectrum probiotics, and it's you think it was it'd be okay, but I think the dosage you, you just can't you know yeah you just can't mess around with that you really need a bit of guidance and we went to emergency and they gave her a lot of lactulose and she was able to poo but that night when she came home she was screaming with stomach pain again for 45 minutes and that was stressful um but you know the next day we she was all better and we learned our lesson to not <laughs> mess with probiotics um yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I get it. it. It's scary when that happens and we we often try to do our best and I, I know that it's it's always unexpected when the opposite happens from from what we want. Yeah, because babies are gentle, you just can't mm -hmm. just give them give them something. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, not have that experience. 
you know thankfully thankfully everything turned around as she started to go on the protocols and even the the second protocol that she was on did you want me to share a little bit about what you guys were doing and and if it helped we haven't you know the second protocol is quite similar to the first protocol and i haven't gotten all the ingredients for the skincare yet we're just doing the diet part yeah. And, and I think that's okay too. I think that because she has gotten much better, it's okay if she doesn't get everything and is not able to do everything as well, especially with the custom creams. But I think it was the supplements as well that you had her on that also made a difference. I think that one is an important one to, to be able to uh, take into account as well. Yeah, I think the supplements helped a lot. Um, mm -hmm they they you know help strengthen those detox pathways so that she doesn't have as much of a you know heavy load some of the root causes that we found for her because of the salicylate and histamine intolerance it really gave us a sign that her liver needed more support especially in terms of to help with supporting her phase two detox pathways and we also found that we had to support her gut health especially with the food intolerances and the eczema as well um, but also um, because there were some bacterial and fungal overgrowth on the skin that's also what we worked on especially on the cheeks where the saliva comes into contact with it but also one last thing was increasing the amount of essential fatty acids in her diet to help support that skin hydration especially because a lack of good fats can be one reason why the skin is dry and often if adding good fats doesn't help the skin then it can often be other things that we have to work on to support the skin hydration but it seemed like that really helped as well adding in the good fats and so looking at everything as a whole even the supplements that you included to help support her liver an example is the glycine but we did other things as well everything all encompassing just taking everything into account seemed like it really helped her get a lot better I always remember to put the supplements in my water every morning now and also from the hair analysis she had actually a lot of minerals already but I knew not to because I would always take that when I was pregnant and after so I knew not to keep taking those mineral supplements anymore and every time every day that I you know once a week or twice a week that I have fatty fish the next day her skin would just glow I wow. could just tell that the inflammation would go down so yeah, the, the, the good fats definitely helped. Wow. And yes, we did the hair mineral analysis for her as well. And that gave us information on her mineral levels and heavy metals, heavy metal levels as well. And so Elaine, for those who are listening, just so that they have some background, was it only you that changed your diet or especially during the beginning of the process? Because she didn't even start eating yet, right? Yeah, it was just me. It was mostly me. And now we are giving her some of the you know some of um, you know the the protocols that ben ben has suggested for us so a little bit of probiotics and some other fatty essential oils how many percent difference would you say her skin is right now uh, in terms of healing um, she would be 80 percent healed and on a good day 99 <laughs> but something always crops up it's her, her brother's birthday and had a little bit of charcoal chicken or some, you know going out to eat um, yeah every now and then there will be a little bit of something um, but I think when she's one and we can detox her properly and get rid of you know everything then we'll see I think she'll yeah. be able to yeah, and already. I know that you've both done a stool test as well, and it's given more information about how her gut is doing. And as she grows older, we can definitely do more to help support that and support her as well. Um, but I think it's also a good time to take a moment to realize how far you've come and to realize how much you've done to change her life. And even though it's only been two or three months of working together, but the fact that she's already 80 80 percent or more healed and better really says a lot to everything you've done and how her body has responded as well i hope you're really proud of yourself elaine for just what a great mom that you are yeah i think every mom you know would walk through fire for for their kids um to see their kids get better and i definitely think the earlier the earlier you know you start 
the better because the longer your drags on, um, you know, they don't have that skin barrier to protect them. It was good that she only, you know, went through two months of, you know, itching and all that and then we were able to start, um, you know, doing the right thing for her. Yeah, for sure. I would love to know as well because uh, we are able to help support you through this and what drove your decision to join our program to help your daughter? It was, you know, some of the stories really resonated with me that, um, you know, when you interview someone and they said that it worked for them, you know, you don't see a lot of people came up to me when my kid had eczema at church and they said, oh, yeah, they, you know, that's hard. My kid went through that too and I said so are they how are they now are they all healed and they said oh no they still get flare-ups and you just don't hear any stories of healing in the conventional route but then when you know you do your research on the naturopath and the functional medicine people said oh yeah um, I you know I'm better now and it, you just don't hear that elsewhere and a lot of these people now go on and heal other people and I think, oh, that can't be a scam because you only do that if if it did work for you. It doesn't make sense that it didn't work for you and then you go help other people. But I thought there, there is something to it um, because from a lot of people's perspective, like my husband, he is a very conventional person and he only believes the conventional route. Anything that's contrary to that is very hard for them to accept. But I am open-minded because I've seen my mom heal she had heart disease and they didn't give her any hope and she did her own stuff and it healed her. I really believe in natural healing and you know I think conventional medicine is a fix on the symptoms. It never goes down to the root cause. And I yeah, and I just and I really do believe that, you know, you need to get to the root cause. I you know, if you keep putting band-aid on it, it's just going to keep coming back you know they said the definition of crazy is you keep doing the same thing hoping for a different result and i and it's not a very nice thing to say but i think why why would you keep doing some something if you know you know we've seen all these youtube videos of people who have been on the steroid creams for for 10 years and that is the result like why not try something else why not you know, it's very scary to do something else and also you get judged for it. You know, your family members might not understand you, why are you doing this? It's probably easier to do it on yourself because no one can say anything, but yeah, it, 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 you know. But at the end of the day, we saw results very quickly and you know, now my husband has nothing to say when I say, oh, well, she's better now, so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I just don't believe in following the norms for a lot of things because I think that we live in a society with many autoimmune diseases and there is something very wrong with the conventional way of eating and the conventional way of living. And I have you know, friends that now have endometriosis, I have friends, people that have diabetes and you know, there needs to be a program for every single one of these because it's prevalent now. Um, and, and people are not getting to the root cause of these, of these diseases. Yeah, for sure. Has your husband changed his mind as a believer? Does he believe in the natural route now? He doesn't say anything, but he's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of other moms who are the same way where their husband doesn't believe in the natural route, but the fact that you advocated for yourself and your daughter really says a lot because it, Advocacy is a big part of this journey. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, people still don't get it. You know, family members and stuff. I think it's, it's very hard for someone to accept that you, you don't have to, you know, just go one way. You can do something else to heal. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And one thing I would love to know as well is that once you started the protocols and you joined our program, what made it different from other things that you've done in the past? Having experienced people that have, you know, treated many eczema patients, it's it's like when you cook yourself and you eat it, or when you go to a restaurant, they know what they're doing, and the food always tastes better, even though you might follow a recipe to a T. I think you have that expertise. And you're able to take the mental load off them from thinking, testing, experimenting, shopping. They waste so much money buying so many different things to test 
on her so many different foods to test on her and just to be able to say okay this 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 get this 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 and try it on her and just that and just yeah just knowing that it's it's gonna work because you have all the you know previous patients that you've seen and if it's helped them it just cuts down that mental load um and it's it, there's a speed to it as well it's just get better not try this and maybe it worked maybe it didn't try this maybe it i completely understand yeah it, it helps you get to where you want to go and your eventual destination a lot faster and lastly do you have any words of advice for any other parents or moms with kids who are going through this you know, it is a very difficult thing to go through and it is very scary and but i think that it, it is worth trying trying a program um, because you're just going to get results faster than scouring all the internet and doing everything yourself i i think a lot of parents fears are oh, what if it's a scam what if it doesn't work it's like it's online well in in sydney there's no natural path that's specialized in eczema we don't really have any anyone when you do a google search they're not specialists and there's a difference because we've seen people who are not specialists and they give, gave us a healthy diet to follow but nothing it didn't clear her overnight um, whereas if they're specialists and they can find out the root cause they'll give you a, a protocol a, a diet that does make an impact and you don't have to wait for the stool results to come back to deal with it. especially for babies because you can't always use harsh things on the baby and all that so yeah we yeah i i, I would i would definitely recommend doing a program like see the conquerors to help even though it's online which people think oh how do you treat someone online but you, you know you can get the protocols you can get the supplements um thank you for sharing your journey and your experience and just everything you've done to help your daughter get better and i just want anyone who's listening to know as well that if you're on the same journey or a similar journey if there's ever days where you feel like the mom guilt or the dad guilt is kicking in and you feel at any point like you're a failure or not doing the right thing, just remember that you are a good parent, you're a good mom, you're a good dad, and you are not a failure and you are able to help their skin heal as well. And all the research and advocacy that you're doing for your child is, is not going down the drain because you will eventually get there. Um, whether it's finding another practitioner to help them get better, or if you want to work with us, either route is okay. I believe that there is a practitioner out there for everyone. And like you said, working with a specialist can always bring you further from where you came from. It really means a lot. And just watching Olivia's healing progress and how much she's come and how far she's come and how far, how much she's overcome as well has been really touching to watch and has been so touching to see as well, just cause my, my little one went through it too and I know the pain that comes along with it. Yeah, thank you, Abby. And yeah, we're, we're so grateful for you and Ben. You know, you've changed our lives. We, I just can't imagine going through so much pain for, you know, such a long time, like all the other people that, that have, you know, that have gone through eczema for many years. You can have a normal life and I'm not going to take, you know, things for granted and get depressed over silly things anymore, you know, so, and we hope that your business continues to thrive and you can reach, you know, you can reach more and more people because I think there's not enough awareness that this exists um, because it's, it's not, it's not going to be at the top of the search results. Mm -hmm. um, it's only going to most likely go through the word of mouth. Yeah, and referrals. I, I understand and I hope that yeah, whoever's listening, our goal is just to see you be able to heal and find the support you need. Whatever avenue that looks like, we support you and I know that you'll eventually get there. Appreciate you for listening as well. And if you've listened far to the end of this episode, I really thank you for your time and for listening to Eling's journey with her daughter. I hope that it was able to help you. If you're ever interested in learning Learning more about our program, you're welcome to book a breakthrough call with one of the eczema advisors on my team and they'd be happy to audit your healing plan and let you know if there's anything that's missing and you can also learn more about how we work with our clients as well and help them on their journey. 
Um, but other than that, remember that there's so many resources out there and you don't always just have to stick with ours, but there's a plethora of options and practitioners out there. I appreciate your time. You, you can connect with me everywhere on social media at Eczema Conquerors. And I look forward to connecting with each of you. And thank you so much for listening to this show. Take care, Eileen.